Good evening. Workers at a food processing factory in West Bromwich are being screened for tuberculosis. It follows positive test results on four people at the Two Sisters site on Dial Lane. Well, those workers have all been treated for the disease, but Public Health England are worried that other workers at the site may have been infected and are now testing them. Our health correspondent, Michaeli Paduano, reports. The Two Sisters Food Group, a company that turns over £3 billion a year, at head office there is a chicken processing plant where 600 staff work standing side by side for eight hour shifts. Most are from Asian and Eastern European backgrounds who are more likely to have been exposed to TB. We are telling anybody for any problem and for health, for cough, everything. They start blood testing from next week, Monday and Tuesday and next month they start x-ray as well. They should have told us sooner. Yeah. All right. Over the past three years, there have been four patients here who contracted the same strain of tuberculosis. Public Health says TB cannot be passed through food, so there is no danger to the wider public. The population that we're dealing with certainly is very diverse, and if we were to screen ordinarily them at random, we would expect to pick up the latent TB, the sleeping TB. Um, so we have to try and unpick whether that's related to just a, a background level or something that needs further investigation. Although tuberculosis is still rare and quite difficult to catch, it is on the increase. Across our region in 2003, there were 784 cases. Four years later, that had risen to 939. And last year, 2012, there were 1,090 cases across the West Midlands. Central Birmingham, Sandwell, Wolverhampton and Coventry are all TB hotspots. The worry now is that the organism is becoming multi-drug resistant. There is now an extreme drug resistant form of the disease called XDR. We do see cases of uh, drug resistant or even extremely drug resistant TB. Thankfully they are rare and they are treated seriously and uh, investigated quite rigorously. Uh, but we're not dealing with that here. There have been other outbreaks. In 2008, 30 children contracted infection at the Birchfield Independent School for Girls. And in 2011, Elena Sarag died of TB because it wasn't diagnosed until it was too late. For most, though, it is still easily treatable. And Michaeli is here now. So what are the symptoms of tuberculosis? Well, it is quite difficult to diagnose, as you saw with the Elena Sarag case, but they are night sweats and fevers, uh, general coughing which can actually lead to sort of coughing up blood eventually and lack of appetite and, uh, and also weight loss over a period of time. So quite general things which makes it difficult to, to actually find out what's going on. But for some there's, there's quite a stigma isn't there about having the disease and then admitting to have the disease? Sadly in certain communities there is a stigma attached to it and uh, clearly it's associated with poverty which is, a, which is a bad thing and because of that people don't come forward early enough which makes it more difficult to treat when they do. Public Health England has said that it really does need to get into these communities and explain to them that this is something that anyone can catch and they need treating quickly. Well you've talked about the treatment but what about a vaccine? Doesn't that work? Well, we vaccinate uh, children from ethnic minority communities at birth, but the issue is that the BCG vaccine is now 90 years old, and frankly, it isn't actually very good. There is talk about vaccinating wider areas uh, when you get to a rate of 40 per 100,000 cases, uh, and in parts of Birmingham, we are higher than that, but they've decided not to go with it. The hope for the future is for a new vaccine. There's a group in Oxford that are working on one, but sadly there isn't one at the moment that is out there that we can use. So they're working on the vaccine. Any idea how far away we might be before we get a new one? Not really. There were tests done in South Africa on a particular vaccine that they had great big hopes for, but unfortunately that vaccine doesn't seem to work on young children. OK. Michaeli, thank you. Coming up later in the programme.